Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. It is a pleasure for me to be here. I'm Giulio Lorenza, a PhD student from the University of Torino. And uh, today I want to talk about uh, my project that uh, started at, uh, during the Master in High Performance Computing that I did uh, at CISA and CTP. And now it's ongoing at the University of Torino. And this is about uh, building an accelerated op uh, open form proof of concept application using modern standard C techniques. So, the objective of this project is to accelerate some open form computation by using modern standardized C parallel technique. In particular, we will focus on a small subset of functionality to build a working proof of concept and uh, we aim to learn the main benefits and limitations of this approach. Uh, the novelty of this work is uh, about to enable both multi-core CPU and GPU execution, uh, just switching a compiler frag. So let's start from the conclusion. Uh, in this work, we use uh, only a few subset of modern C++ construct. For example, for each transform, fill, copy, and exclusive scan. Uh, the code is not drastically changed, but uh, some refactoring is unavoidable. Uh, with, this, uh, with this project, we want to uh, develop an open form code, an open form proof of concept to maintain the native uh, portability of the open form. So one critical point in this approach is to manage data movement that comes from the object-oriented program. And this data movement is difficult to work around. But uh, one thing to notice is that uh, if the computation uh, is uh, executed on, on GPUs, this data movement is eliminated. And uh, to to build this proof of concept, uh, explicit, uh, an explicit prefetching uh, can help, but uh, it, obviously it is not the ultimate solution. In, uh, moreover, to enable this uh, parallelization uh, technique, uh, a mechanism to manage memory is crucial. So modern standard C++ was into that uh, we use was the standard uh, C17, in, in which there was the introduction of the parallel standard template library. With this, uh, with this library, uh, this library gives us the possibility to execute uh, uh, algorithm, algorithms that, uh, that uh, are implemented in the, in the standard template in parallel, adding an execution policy. Uh, when you compile the code with a compiler that is able to uh, compile these new C++ uh, uh, standards, uh, you can uh, parallel, uh, execute the code in parallel. And uh, a compiler that is able to do that is an MVC++ uh, compiler, uh, which is part of uh, the APC SDK toolchain. This compiler is not able to generate assembly code for the serial execution, but it is able also to generate assembly code that can be offloaded on the uh, GPU, uh, switching the adding the, the, the compiler flag minus SD par equal GPUs. And that it is able also to uh, compile the code for multi-threading multi -threading execution, like uh, adding SD par in equal multi-core. Moreover, this compiler uh, is compatible with the MPI, so you can uh, execute code on multi nodes. A mechanism that is required in order to offload the computation, uh, computation on GPUs is the unified memory approach that was introduced the first time in CUDA 6. And basically, this mechanism creates a single unified virtual address space accessible from any processor in a system. Uh, the CUDA driver manages the, uh, the data movement. Uh, th it is important to know, thing, to know um, that uh, only data dynamically allocated on CPUs can be managed by this mechanism. 
in open form, we take uh, a small kernel that is degrading computation. Um, it, it is in the, done in the assembly phase when you construct the matrices, uh, for example. And this uh, is a very small kernel, but the difficulty arising from uh, this kernel uh, in, uh, when we try to parallelize uh, and execute it in, on GPUs are very general. And so we can apply the strategy used to uh, port in this uh, small kernel on GPUs, also to other operators in the other part of open form. So the first things that we have done was uh, to take the Kyle Green output and to see it from the Kcache Green output in order to visualize what are the main uh, function, um, the, the main intensive function. Uh, we we find out that uh, the 99% of the total gradient computation time is spent uh, by this free function, interpolate grade F and correct boundary condition. So we look uh, at uh, this function and we try to parallelize uh, the inner loop uh, in order to execute them in, on GPUs. An example of code that uh, was managed in order to be executed on GPUs is the dot interpolate uh, uh, function in which there is this, uh, uh, this code and we change this code uh, using a standard for each algorithm and specifying the execution pol policy and putting the computation inside uh, the Lambda. Another code that uh, we translate in order to execute the, the, uh, the, the computation GPUs is, uh, oh, sorry, this is a mistake, uh, is um, the gradient division in which uh, uh, from the Kcache gradient output, uh, um, we noticed that uh, this operation was uh, carried out from the expanded macro and we modified that macro with uh, using as previously uh, as in previous slide uh, the standard for each algorithm and so uh, we are able to uh, divide the, this field uh, on GPUs. Uh, the system that in which we tested our application was a uh, two system. One is a uh, uh, at the, located at the University of Turin and IPC for AI. The system is called the PITO. Uh, it is composed by an ARM architecture with 80 cores and uh, two GPUs, uh, Ampere 100. The other system is Carolina. It is composed by an architecture of 86-64. And uh, mm, it has uh, two sockets, one uh, with uh, 64 cores, for, per socket and eight GPUs per node, so uh, four GPUs per socket. We tested our application on a mesh of 260 cube. And here we, we see the result from the PITO simulation. Uh, we take the mesh and we uh, execute on fully MPI with 80 80 cores and in one node, and uh, we compare the result uh, with the one MPI and one GPUs and two MPI and two GPUs. The application, uh, the, the time counters are the first iteration, and then we execute other 100 iterations, and then we get the total time. We subdivide the first iteration from the other 100 iteration because in the first iteration there are some computation that uh, uh, are executed only in this iteration, not in the others. So, and uh, moreover, in the first iteration, we add in some prefetching that uh, happen only in the first iteration. Uh, from the result, we can see that uh, um, uh, we gain uh, 1.8. Uh, when uh, using when uh, we use one GPU and one MPI, and uh, we achieve three uh, times uh, when uh, you are you we are using two MPI and two GPUs. Then we try to make some weak scaling analysis in the node, and we put uh, the same mesh size, and uh, we comparing the 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 mesh size. Uh, with uh, 
40, 40 MPI with uh, one MPI and one GPUs. We get, uh, as previously, 1.8. And uh, um, then we take a mesh that is uh, double uh, in size uh, respect to the previous one. And uh, we um, compare the results with any, uh, executing it on uh, with the NT MPI and two MPI and two GPUs. From uh, Carolina uh, tests, um, we take the same mesh and we execute it using 128 uh, MPI, so full node, full MPI node, and we compare with the MPI, eight MPI, eight GPUs. And uh, in this case, we, we, we get a 1.4 uh, speed up. So what uh, we have done was to increase the size and uh, try to make a weak scaling uh, analysis in that node. So we take uh, the, the, pre the mesh of 260 for each GPU. And uh, so we execute two simulations, one simulation on uh, half of the node with a mesh of 220 times 220 times two, uh, 2000. Uh, 260 uh, and we execute it on uh, 64 MPI and we compare the results with uh, 4 MPI for GPUs, we obtain 3.6 and uh, then on full node we adding uh, we double the mesh size and uh, um, we double the MPI, we use one, uh, 128 MPI and compare with the eight MPI, eight GPUs, we gain a factor of five times seven. So in conclusion, the most, uh, the maximum speed up that uh, we achieved was uh, 3.4 in Epito and uh, 5.7 on Carolina. Uh, in the future, we, we uh, it could be interesting to compile the code for uh, using new tool chain because of, and uh, enable by this tool chain the MP, uh, the multi-core execution with two different backends with the NVIDIA and uh, OpenMP um, using standard par equal multi-core and with Intel DBB and GGG. Moreover, um, we want to make some test on multi-node execution, some, some tests are are already be done, but uh, some other uh, test uh, case uh, must done. And uh, moreover, we look for uh, um, test also in, on, on another architecture that is uh, the Grace Hopper architecture in which uh, these uh, uh, the data movement should be uh, really reduced. Uh, for future, uh, also it, it, could, it could be interesting to extend uh, this uh, model to other op operators like the operation operator and execute, uh, um, for example, an end-to-end -end application like a simple form using the assembly phase done in this way and maybe the solver phase done using Petsy for form and connect to some libraries very efficient like um, like MGX, uh, um, um, Hyper, and uh, uh, and uh, other libraries that are able to flow the execution on GPUs. Uh, so, achievement. I would like to say thank you to all people that work with me and all the institution. Thank you. Uh, not important, but something that should be forward in a way. I, I should be very interested to see, let's say, a solver. I don't know how much is the airport. I don't know how much is the airport. Or full solver with the standard parallel, or full solver with the, the, uh, the assembly phase uh, made in parallel, and then maybe connecting it with uh, some libraries that uh, are able to execute uh, solver part in GPUs. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Yeah. I agree. This could be easy, but uh, 
all the uh, operators that are needed for the simulation must be executed on GPUs, must be created on GPUs. Yeah, in the old code, there is the this for loop that uh, normally is executed on uh, uh, on CPU sequentially. So, uh, so one core execute this loop. In the new code, you can uh, using for each algorithm this one. And uh, you can specify the policy the, the, uh, with the, which you want to execute this algorithm. And this is allowed from, by the standard template library. Then you can create, uh, this is just uh, to execute it, but uh, there are many ways to do that. And you can create a, a views and put inside the for each. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in the top code? Yeah. Uh, why in the old code there is no MPI? Yeah. Because the MPI uh, can be four. Because the MPI came before uh, when you la launch the simulation, uh, you start uh, the MPI threads. Then each MPI uh, each, each MPI course execute this code. No, each MPI core execute this for loop. So now, this MPI, each MPI code executes this for loop. Yes. Uh, because, uh, uh, as you say, uh, each rank you work on different part of the domains, and each ranks uh, execute this loop. Yeah, and uh, my code is the same. I didn't touch the the MPI part. Okay, next speaker is Ilya Popov, right? Okay, uh, about the integration of memory locality optimizations into open form. From uh, uh, ESQ and Open. ISEC, sorry, ISEC uh, BV, what does it mean? ISEC? ISEC, hi. Not really sure. <laughs> is your institution <laughs> is it university or private? No, no, no. This is private company. Ah, okay. We do open form based uh, codes for plasma and uh, fluid dynamics for uh, semiconductor industry. Okay. Good. Okay. Thanks. Please. Yeah, so uh, uh, in previous open phone workshops, I've shown a number of techniques that we use in our internal code to uh, optimize memory locality. And well, my idea is to, to share these ideas here and kind of 
um, started some collaboration about this. And uh, these techniques were uh, loop fusion, where uh, instead of doing a loop with one iteration, then a loop with another iteration, you do one loop with multiple iteration inside it. So you don't need to store and read again uh, intermediate results. Then uh, another technique is micro domains is where you split your mesh into uh, a number of uh, small micro domains with size comparable to cache size. So uh, the intermediate results, if they need to be stored, they are stored in small uh, portions. And then I also talked about uh, switching loop order where, uh, for example, changing a loop order over species uh, and over cells um, and over micro domains with different combinations, you can also gain some performance. But, well, e and these techniques, they are effective. We've uh, seen about uh, three times performance increase with these techniques. But the code to, to do all this is quite complex. And uh, basically, as it was, um, for each operation, for each solver, you would need to do all this over and over again, which is, well, uh, difficult and error prone. And in this talk, my kind of general idea is to try to simplify this code so that a uh, large uh, number of people can benefit from it and can uh, kind of use it in their own codes. So um, uh, what, what, what's the goal is to make the code using all these techniques uh, look as close as possible to standard open phone code. Uh, so uh, this makes it easier to write and to read. And all the iteration uh, logic, this micro domain logic, to consolidate it in one place so you can easily change it and experiment with different things like OpenMP or GPU or something else. Um, yeah, so um, also, uh, first of all, it, it's directly applicable to, to um, expressions that are not uh, uh, implicit, but also for some implicit solvers, for example, we are using GMRS with ELU SGS preconditioner. We found that uh, we also, uh, for example, we are compu computing the full true uh, nonlinear residual in every iteration. We can improve convergence, and this uh, residual is kind of complex expression similar to what I will be talking about. Um, and you, you can also use this fact that iteration will be consolidated in one place to, to change, for example, uh, to make overlapping of parallel communications and uh, internal uh, com uh, computations. So uh, let's uh, do a little case study. So we will start with an, an expression, a complex e expression. This is a, a viscous uh, flux. So this is a relatively complex expression, but still uh, of the kind that is in real world uh, solvers. Um, and this is how it looks like in standard open phone. Um, so uh, here um, there are interesting aspects of this expression. Is the the result is uh, is defined on faces. But the source fields mu and u are defined in cells. So we have to do interpolation. And also there is a gradient operation right there. Um, so what we do, we'll have to implement all this. Uh, and this is performance of this expression. It's in throughput in a million phases per second depending on memory size. So you can see that there is, uh, uh, you can see approximately cache boundaries uh, and performance goes down for larger and larger um, meshes. And this is a single core performance. So the, uh, first we'll discuss only single core. Um, 
So you can uh, fuse all these operations manually in one loop, and this is how this function uh, would look like. So we have um, a loop over faces, then a loop over boundaries, and uh, different cases for coupled and uh, regular boundaries. Uh, and this, in three places, we compute the actual uh, expression. So uh, advantages of this code is that uh, the performance is as high as it gets, because we have full control over iteration order and we can order it optimally. But the, the amount of code, this is 50 lines, uh, one function for one expression, and large part of this code, everything except these three lines, is just boilerplate for iteration. And this is in general would be similar for different expressions, but you still have to write it over and over again. So um, how can we make this code this better? How can we um, abstract this iteration logic? So the idea is to use uh, uh, C++ lambdas. So we can pass a lambda and a list of fields into this function and then call this lambda in these three places, uh, providing elements of the fields um, as arguments. Uh, so, uh, yeah. So, um, well, it also re requires some C++ template magic to allow for an arbitrary number of uh, uh, fields. And also here, uh, as we said, some fields are defined on uh, cells, some are on faces, so we need to support automatic interpolation of uh, volumetric fields. And this is uh, what, what it gets. So there is a function, you provide a lambda um, and uh, provide a, a list of fields. And it runs this loop um, uh, to compute the expression. So uh, Advantages of this approach is uh, we removed most of the temporary fields, except for gradient. Gradient still has to be computed separately because it's a stencil uh, operation. It does not fit into that uh, uh, loop. Uh, performance is good. It's uh, uh, up to three times improvement over original open form expression. Um, and Iteration logic is in one place, so we can uh, uh, modify it as we want, can experiment with it. But uh, there are still some problems with this approach is that uh, the code is still different, from, very different from Opal phone code, and it's a little bit convoluted, especially for, for let's say, C++ novices. Uh, because it requires to use a lambda. Also, it requires repeating the argument. So you can see that field names are repeated a uh, number of times. You can also specify um, element types, which are redundant, which can be actually inferred from the um, uh, fields, but you have to still specify them. So we can do better. And we can do better by using expression templates. Uh, so in standard open form, there is a VC uh, namespace where every operation produces a temporary field. And there is a VM um, namespace where it produces a matrix for implicit computation. Now we introduce another thing, FV, finite volume expression, um, where each um, operator and each function, it produces an expression. Um, the construction of the expression itself is um, very lightweight, but uh, computation itself happens in this operator arrow, um, <clears throat> which, uh, which runs the loop and drives all this uh, expression. So uh, the type of this, this thing is just this. So 
uh, the structure of the expression is encoded into the type. And the operator arrow calls an operator uh, brackets on this expression, which recursively calls operator brackets on the sub expressions. And with uh, expression templates, our expression will look like this. Um, so the same, uh, no temporary fields ex except for gradient, same performance as uh, previous code, uh, manual looping. So we didn't lose any performance. The compiler was able to kind of unwrap all these expressions and uh, produce almost exactly the same assembly, just a few instructions were different. Um, yeah, and the expression now is concise and looks very similar to the standard open form expression. Uh, the only difference is that read um, function and it only needed such that um, uh, then it will select the FV versions of operators instead of the uh, standard open form ones. Um, Yeah, uh, but still uh, the gradient has to compute it separately. So this is still a disadvantage uh, and there is a temporary field for the gradient. So now let's talk a little bit about how this is implemented. So uh, each expression is a struct which has this interface so it knows its value type. It knows its location, meaning either on cells or on faces. So it's also in code, it's all uh, const expert, so it's known at compile time. And it selects the correct um, operations and correct loops. Um, and there is operator brackets that get, gets the value um, on internal faces or cells, and there is a bound on boundary uh, function that fetches the value on boundary, um, and it also supports the dimensions as a regular open form. Um, of different types of operators, there are different complexity of implementation. The easy complexity level is element-wise functions, like um, arithmetic operators, like uh, these tensor operators. Um, this adjust uh, the operator bracket of the expression just calls operator brackets of its arguments and applies the operation like uh, dot product um, to them. So this is uh, relatively simple. And then um, next level, um, these are, um, operations that data defined on faces and require values from two cells ad adjacent to the face. So here, um, um, yeah, so this is, uh, for example, in our uh, viscous flux expression, these are interpolation operations highlighted there. Um, and here, what we can do is we can um, do the, in actual interpolation inside these operator brackets. So uh, operator brackets for the interpolate expression will call operator brackets for uh, its nested expression twice, and then interpolate the results. Um, this works unless this nested expression is complex because now uh, we call it twice as many times as needed. Um, but for our case, this, this, this is sufficient. And then higher level are stencil-based operators, such as surface integrate, diversions, gradient. Um, these are um, more difficult, so we have gradient here. Um, and for example, for gradient, how OpenFOAM implements it and how it's uh, uh, 
um, efficient to implement is loop over um, faces and updates value of gradient on both sides of the face. That means we must switch orders of iteration uh, in parts of this um, uh, expression tree. And this means that we have to store the we have to store the intermediate results somewhere, but we want to store it in some in such way that it does not um, uh, in in a cache friendly way. And here uh, we come to these micro domains, which means that we split our mesh into small um, uh, sections, small micro domains that size is similar to, to uh, uh, cache size. And then we, what we can do is instead of iterating over all cells or, or faces, we do a outer loop over micro domains. Then for each internal and boundary phase of this micro domain, we update gradients on both sides. So after this uh, section, we will get a picture like this. So solid dots are fully updated gradient and empty dots are a partially updated gradient. And you can see that after this, we can compute our expression in internal faces of this micro domain because um, for internal faces, both sides are fully updated. So then we, we loop over internal faces and compute our viscous flux expression. And actually, OpenFOAM already has something uh, to, to support this. In Renumber Mesh Utility, there is undocumented uh, option called block size, which uh, does what we need. It calls internally, it calls scotch to, to decompose the domain into, uh, they call it blocks of size of approximately, approximately this size that you specified. And then it arrange, what it does, it arranges the uh, faces, uh, cell and faces in such a way that uh, you have internal faces of, of one block, uh, internal faces of next block, and then in the end you have uh, faces between blocks. And uh, this is what we need and we can use that. And this is final um, expression uh, that uses expression templates and uses a gradient right there um, without full, creating full intermediate field. And this gives additional um, performance improvement, especially in the region um, of RAM, uh, of very large um, uh, meshes. But remember, this is for single core. So, um, Normally, you would uh, you would have much uh, smaller number of cells per core. So um, uh, maybe you will not get this this improvement from micro domains. Yeah. So this is final kind of result, uh, which incorporates all the advantages of the previous uh, uh, previous steps. Um, yeah. And so far uh, the problem that, that's left is that it supports only one level of this cell phase iteration transition, but maybe it can be uh, done, but I have not uh, come up with, it, with, with a way to overcome this yet. Yeah, so um, there is a little demo code on, on GitHub. Um, it's not uh, uh, usable for real life applications yet uh, because it implements only a subset of operations and also um, uh, yeah, uh, not um, parallel communication is not fully implemented yet either. So this, this needs work. Yeah, the code uses C++ 11, 
no advanced features, so it's fully compatible with uh, uh, Open Foam. Um, I've tested it with 22.12, but all the recent versions should work fine. Um, yeah, it uses a couple of additional uh, libraries, but uh, nothing, nothing really special. And uh, yeah, so next steps to 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 improve this code would be to complete a set of operations, uh, complete support for parallel communication, which is uh, which is actually also needs a little bit of work uh, because of the. Uh, patch inter internal field and patch neighbor field functions that also create temporaries. So we have to uh, remove that. Um, yeah, and then we can experiment with different orders of iteration or different um, um, parallelization techniques, some such as OpenMP or GPU or, or something else. Um, yeah, so this kind of opens uh, the way to um, uh, to further improvements and to further exploration. So thank you very much. Developers are getting, are getting just a bit of something, just a competent and the number match user the LCFP the number is past matrix and we do the dispassion. This is what the user that usually don't perform, but this is what we for. Maybe you have one past matrix for your Well, uh, this, uh, I am not sure. Uh, it is definitely present in openform.com version, but I'm not sure if it's present in other versions. I'm not sure. Ah, okay. Uh, yes, I've looked into uh, Boost Yap library indeed, uh, and this is something uh, that probably can be used here. Uh, I the only thing is that I found that learning this Boost Yap library was kind of a little di difficult. So uh, I thought that implementing everything myself, at, le at least at this prototype phase, was easier than using that. Well, for this, um, so I've put up a kind of demo application that computes this expression in multiple uh, ways that I've shown you and a couple of uh, more ways that I didn't show because they didn't work. <laughs> um, uh, and this uh, this application compilation time is uh, uh, actually not, not very diff different from um, 
uh, standard open form because open form is already very slow to compile. And this adds uh, just uh, maybe a second to the compilation time. Instead of 14 seconds, you get 15 seconds. Okay, 